Let's talk about non-inventory and service items used on purchases. And this is really important because one of the, uh, one of the advice that I give to, to my customers is don't manage inventory through QuickBooks. You, you don't have the bandwidth, you don't have the expertise, you don't wanna invest the money in training, and you don't have the time to sit there and, and make sure that you do the entire workflow then you make the adjustment. So it is possible to, to purchase and sell products as a business and not have to use the inventory feature inside QuickBooks. So I want to take you to a quick run through of how that works. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the gear menu on the top right, and then I'm gonna go into products and services. So gear menu, products and services, that's gonna take me to my products and services list. Now I'm gonna create a couple of non-inventory parts just to kind of get this started. And then afterwards, we're gonna jump into inventory items. So I'm gonna click on the new button on the top right of the screen. Let's zoom in a little bit. So I'm gonna click on new on the top right, and it's gonna take me to the new product or new product service information uh, uh, slider or the uh, drawer on the right side. Here I get to choose whether I want inventory, non-inventory or bundle. So we're gonna start with non-inventory. And let me create a product. So I'm gonna, let's say, for example, I'm selling iPhones and iMacs. Now, in order to avoid any confusion, I'm going to call all my non-inventory parts NI. So I'm going to start with NI just to kind of simplify things here. And then we're going to call this one iPhone X Max and 32 gigabytes. Let's do 128 gigabytes black. Okay. So I'm, I'm giving this product a name. Now, SKU, you normally would use SKU for a part number. So let's say, for example, the Apple's part number is, um, it's got some, some code here and you want to use their, their code, their SKU, because maybe you want to search it by that SKU, or maybe you want to, in your purchase order, you want to specify that SKU. You know, there, there's just going to be situations in which you want to use their, their official code. Now you could also um, you can also hide that code from the forms if you don't want your customers to see it. So there are some situations in which uh, people don't want to give their customers that code because if you give them an estimate and it has that that code, uh, maybe they'll Google that and then they'll go somewhere and and shop it and get uh, a better deal somewhere else. So you actually can use that SKU internally or you can use it externally, it's up to you. Now, I am a fan of creating uh, categories or sub items. Now, th this gets a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna wait a little bit to talk about that. Let me just continue to create the non-inventory product. And there's two checkboxes here. One is I sell this product for my customers, and the other one is I purchase this product from a vendor. Very, very important. If you want this item to be available, for you to select in the drop down when you're doing a purchase order, a bill, a check, or an expense. If you want that item to be available, you must hit that checkbox. Many people forget to hit that checkbox and then it never shows up and it's never available on that on the expense side or in the purchase side. So that's what that's for. Now on the description side, you can have two descriptions, right? So I can have one description, let's call this one uh, customer friendly. I'm going to use the same thing as the item name, but then maybe on the purchase description, I want to maybe use the SKU as well or, and use some, some internal coding, like uh, I'll put uh, jet black on the color and then I'll put, you know, 7.5 inches or whatever. I'm just adding some, some additional uh, tech specs. So it is possible that you want your purchase order or your vendor to see the description of the product in such a way that it makes sense to them. But then you want the description to your customer in a way that it makes sense only to your customer. And it's possible that technical descriptions that go on the purchase side could give away what the product is, who you're buying it from, and they can circumvent you as a reseller or whatever it happens to be. So I just really, really make sure that I make a big emphasis that the description for sales and purchases are gonna be different. Now, sales price is self-explanatory. Let's say this one's gonna be uh, 999.99, and then the cost, let's just say this is $750. Now, 
this is a personal preference of mine, okay? Not necessarily uh, something that I've, I always do, but I try to make sure that most of my customers, I, I give them this uh, piece of advice is when you have multiple products, product categories, product types, you should create income accounts that follow that product category or that general grouping. This is gonna make it much easier to sort and reclassify in the future. It's gonna make it easier to report and to filter. So generally, I create a general income account or an account called sales. So this is what I always do. I create an account called sales. And then under that, I'm gonna create the parent category. Now, this has nothing to do with sub items or the QuickBooks Online categories feature. This has to do with your chart of accounts. So this is something that I strongly believe that you should be doing. So I'm gonna create a new account right on the fly and I'm gonna call this one uh, phones. Okay, so let's say I'm gonna have phones and laptops as two different categories. Now the income account, it's, it's just a regular income account and the detail type doesn't matter. I mean, this stuff is just here to kind of uh, annoy us for the most part, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that and put the right uh, name up here. And I'm gonna make this a sub account of sales. And this is always, I always, always, always do this. This is not uh, optional in my world, but, uh, but to my customers, I always make sure that I create income categories, cost of goods sold categories, and inventory categories for each product family. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and close and do that. And on the, on the purchases, I'll do the same thing. I created a cost of goods sold account called COGS. And I make that short uh, writing on purpose for really for reports purposes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create a new a new category. It's also gonna be called uh, COGS, is, I mean uh, phones. So this is phones and this will be a subcategory of COGS. Okay, so you can see the pattern here. I'll save and close over here. And then on the preferred vendor, I'll type here uh, Apple. Okay. Now this is a new feature. Preferred vendor is actually pretty awesome. And I'll explain later how that works and how that's even, um, even, uh, useful, but you want to start using preferred vendors because I have a feeling that QuickBooks online is going to do a lot of great things with this pre preferred vendor. This is kind of the, the first step. So I went ahead and hit uh, save and close and there's my non inventory part. Now, once you create the non-inventory part, you can click on the drop-down menu and click on duplicate. And that really is the fastest way to create an additional item. I'm gonna click on duplicate here. And then I'm gonna change the description and I'm gonna call this one uh, MacBook Air 128 gigabytes. And I'll just uh, change the description here across the board. And let's say the price for this one, it's 11.99.99. Income account, that's gonna be different. I have to create a new account uh, called laptops. So I'm gonna create a new account called laptops. I'm gonna do laptops here. And I'm gonna make that a sub account of sales. Now, a lot of these things that I'm doing, it's gonna be fundamental, useful, whether you're doing a non-inventory part or an inventory part. For the time being, I'm focused on non-inventory because non-inventory, it's an option and you want, you may want your customers to be using non-inventory. Okay, so I'm gonna create a uh, an expense category called laptops. Let me click on the drop down menu here for the cost of goods sold uh, category as well. So this is gonna be called laptop. This is gonna be a COGS account and I'll make it a sub account of my COGS general account. Okay, so I have uh, my two uh, my income and my cost of goods sold category. I have my two, two items. I'm good to go. I'm going to hit uh, save and close. So this is the fundamental of inventory. It's understanding non-inventory first, believe it or not. It's just, just really important. So let's start with the uh, workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase a couple of these units. So I'm going to click on the create button. I'm going to go to create purchase order. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna skip vendor for now, and I want you to see this, it's really cool. I'm gonna select one of the items here, so I'm gonna select uh, the iPhone, and notice that, you will notice that automatically, actually, it didn't happen this time for some reason, but um, usually because of the preferred vendor, the preferred vendor in the top gets pre-filled, not sure why it didn't do it, but we'll deal with that later. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit drop down and click on Apple, because that's who I'm buying it from, and I have here my two items. So I'm gonna buy, let's say, uh, 10 of each. Okay, 
And again, because this is a non, this is a non inventory item, this is going to go straight to my COGS account. I'm going to date this back to May. I'm going to click on save and close. Then I'm going to do the first, the next step, which is receiving the inventory. There's essentially two ways to receive inventory. One, I can go back to the original purchase order and I can click on copy to bill. That's an option. I can copy to bill. So I click on copy to bill and everything just comes in a hundred percent. So that's option number one for, for not receiving the inventory, but converting the PO to the bill. Option number two is to create a bill from scratch and we will select uh, the vendor's name and then we'll see the drawer on the right hand side that shows me all the details about the open purchase orders that I have. At that point, I can click on add and I will bring that information in there. So it's essentially two ways to receive a PO into a bill. So uh, in some cases, our customers, I mean, our vendors also charge us for freight. Let's say that's the case. I'm gonna go ahead and create a freight item here on the spot. I'm gonna make this a service item and I'm gonna send this to a uh, income account. I'm gonna go to sales. I'm gonna create a sub account called uh, shipping income. So I'll create a new account called uh, shipping income and I'm gonna make that a sub account of sales. Again, really important for us to do that. And then I'll do uh, save and close. And then on the cost of goods sold account, we're gonna call it shipping costs. And I'll make that a cost of goods sold, any sub account of Cox. And I'm very anal about doing this sub accounts because I wanna have really, really clean uh, P&L and balance sheet. Now in the description, I can leave this blank and on the price, I'll certainly leave that blank because that's always gonna change no matter what. So I'll go ahead and hit save and close. There's my freight item, and let's say they charge me $986 for freight. There's my bill for $18,986. I'm going to go ahead and click on save and close. Okay, so I, I received my bill for the original PO. This is um, the this is the um, the the non inventory part, right? Let me go ahead and also now sell it. So I'm going to create a quick invoice to a random customer. I'll just pick a a customer here at random, let's say this guy over here, and I'll date this uh, today's date, and I'm gonna go ahead and sell him uh, one iPhone. Okay, so I had one sale for $1,000 to this one customer, and that's it, so I'll hit uh, save and close. So what happens, or what's what are, what are the pros and cons with what I just did? So if I go to reports, and I click on my profit and loss, and I'll do a profit and loss, for this month, so let's do this month, and click on run report. I'm gonna have my sales, you see right here, my sales of $999, and then I'm gonna see my cost of $18,000. The challenge with that, and I have other transactions in there that I don't need to delete, but they're just there, but let's just focus on this here, $1,000 in sales and $18,000 in cost. The problem with that is that I have a timing problem, right? So I'm taking a cost on the day that I receive it and I'm taking a sale only partially for the things that I'm selling. So my p is going to be all out of whack. I'm going to see more costs than sales. And this is why it's valuable to use inventory because I don't have to deal with this uh, potential problem of not being able to know exactly how much money I'm making. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is if I do a profit and loss by customer, in this case, and I click on run report, you will notice that under my customer Carlos, I have a thousand dollar sale here, and then I have no underlying cost. And the reason for that is because I used a non inventory part and I didn't job cost that particular item. Now, if I'm still using a non inventory part and I, and I want to go back and assign a cost to that particular unit, I literally going to have to go back to my original bill. And I have to split this up. I mean, this is how annoying this could get. I have to split them up and say, you know what? Only nine of them were sort of general inventory. And then a separate item by itself was for Carlos, right? That my customer Carlos. So if I do this, which is an extremely annoying long process, I could essentially get my cost of goods sold by customer uh, correct 
by job costing one of the items. But the problem is that this is just, it just takes a very, very long time. Now, I love non-inventory because most inventory users have a complete mess in their books and it just becomes a lot easier to manage when people use non-inventory and they would manually at the end of the year just pick a number and increase the inventory and decrease costs. But that's the, essentially the challenge that we have with using non-inventory. So I wanna make sure that we're 100% okay in understanding that baseline that uh, non-inventory is great, it works really well, but it creates a timing problem and it doesn't give us profitability by customer or profitability by item, okay? So you can do a PL in this case by products or services and I'll click on run report and I, I'm gonna have the exact same problem here. I'm gonna go to my iPhone item, where is it? Let me filter it, that might be easier here. So I'm gonna filter this one by the iPhone. There we go, run report. So I got a profit and loss by the iPhone. I have the same problem, right? This is based on cash basis. This is when, when I bought it, the entire inventory and when I sold it. So it also looks like I'm not making any money on this product. And again, it's just a matter of a timing issue.